So obviously, today is July 29th. I don't have Xenoblade 3 because I was one of the fools that waited hours to purchase the special edition and Nintendo of America is Nintendo of America, but I can still review this masterpiece of a DLC because its impact can be felt across the entire world regardless of whether you own the game or not. Firstly, the DLC features some items to help you get started on your journey through the world of Iodios, and these items are just fantastic. I genuinely love getting items that just give me a really big head start on the game and make the beginning of the game less fun because I just hate RPG progression and starting the game from the beginning at pure level 1, especially since I'm going to be playing the game on hard mode and I definitely am not looking for a genuine challenge with this game. Um, yeah. This masterpiece of a DLC also features new outfits. Well, different colors of the default outfits. Monolith Soft basically just went into the texture files for the default outfits and just changed the colors, and now this is what we have. That's, uh, fantastic! I love these outfits. They have changed my life. I can now perfectly feel these characters better because their outfits are now different colors that looked objectively worse. Yeah! 5 out of 5. Thank you, Monolith Soft, for blessing the world with this incredible package of downloadable content. It's life-changing, and there is nothing in this world that is greater. Oh wait, Xenosaga Freaks exist- Okay, let's be serious now and actually talk about this DLC. I know day one DLC as a practice is frowned upon, but in this case in particular, it really doesn't seem that bad. In the case of games like Sonic Colors Ultimate or Sonic Origins, that was content that could have easily been in the base game that was taken out for the sake of selling it separately. That's greedy and genuinely something that is a problem with the industry. With Xenoblade 3, I feel the situation is different because you're buying this DLC for the future post-launch content it will offer and will just be taking Wave 1 as a bonus. I mean, Torna was easily worth the $30 price tag alone, and that DLC also came with a bunch of other stuff, so I have to assume that this DLC will be the same. To me, Wave 1 is just Monolith Soft giving some launch day thank you bonuses for having faith in them and supporting them with such a blind purchase. They did it before with Zeal by 2's DLC and did something kinda similar with Definitive Edition. I'm not going to be claiming any of the bonuses because they don't interest me, but at the end of the day, they're all completely optional and I don't have a problem with them. If you're wondering whether you should get the DLC, the answer is very obviously no. I know that I will be playing the waves 2 to 4 day 1 regardless of how good they are, so I have no issue just getting the DLC now to not have to worry about it. But obviously, it is not at all bad to wait and see what the future content will be before committing $30 towards it. I'll go ahead and give this first wave a 2 out of 5, just to make it clear that this isn't something that's worth your money right now. But I don't think this is anything bad. Its existence is perfectly fine with me, and it's better than them giving absolutely nothing until later. Uh, this video is kinda short. You know what, since you're still here, this is my ranking of all the Wave 1 outfits. At number 6 is Uni. This one looks absolutely terrible and I have no idea what they were thinking. I like the grey and orange jacket, but the bright red being the main color just completely ruins everything. At number 5 is Lands. Definitely not the worst, but not super great either. I don't really think the yellow fits Lands super well, but at least it's not as distracting as with Yumi. At number 4 is Noah. I love the blue jacket and I think it looks sick, but then the yellow shirt just completely ruins it for me. Had this shirt been something else like black instead, the salt would be way higher. At number 3 is Sena. Not quite as good as her default, but it's still good. Since Sena's outfit doesn't cover as much of her body, it doesn't feel as distracting as with Uni, and the color choice itself is definitely way more pleasant. At number 2 is Mio. Pretty great all honestly. The mostly black outfit with purple hints combined to make this one pretty unique, and I can see myself switching to this one if I get tired of her default. And at number 1 is Tyon, very easily. This is genuinely fantastic. 
The bright blue highlights are just enough to make it not too overbearing, and the mostly darker outfit makes this one look amazing. I'll be sticking with his default for the beginning, but once I really get into the game, I'll probably be switching to this one. So yeah, half of them I'll never be using, and the other half I may use at some point. But overall, this isn't a super great selection. Even though they're just color changes, I think they could have been a little bit more creative. To be clear, I really love all of the default designs, it's just these recolors that I'm not a super big fan of. Wait, I just realized, I put all the Kevis characters as the bottom three and the Agnes ones as the top three. I swear that wasn't intentional. 